Hey there, this is Jim Donovan. Welcome to the show. I am glad you're here. Today we're going to talk about what caused 50,000 people to become instant friends. Before we get started, I'd like to invite you to take advantage of a free resource I made for you. It's called the Sound Health Newsletter. In it, I share the latest research in music and health. Plus, you'll learn music and wellness exercises that you can use every day to feel your best. Just come visit me at DonovanHealth.com to get started today. That's DonovanHealth.com. Hands down, one of my favorite shows with my former band, Rusted Root, was when we had the honor of opening for the Grateful Dead in 1995 at Three Rivers Stadium in our hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'll never forget the sight of 50,000 deadheads bouncing in unison to the beat of my drums. And I remember being taken aback at how everyone looked like one big swaying organism. I recently posted an old photo from that show on Facebook, and the response I received was overwhelming. One person said, This was the only time I finally got to see the Grateful Dead, and I'm so glad I made that show. The sound of the stadium rocking and bouncing from everyone jumping, excited for Rusted Root, was an awesome experience. Another person said, I was there. It was pretty impressive to see you all on that big stage. An all-time favorite Dead Show memory. We had spots on the ground floor bouncing along with everyone else. Thanks for reminding us. Throughout the years, Rusted Root toured with various iterations of the Grateful Dead Band. And the one thing that really stuck out to me was that no matter where we were, all of their fans seemed to connect with each other in a very deep way. As it turns out, there's actually a scientific explanation for this crowd bonding phenomenon. In fact, it involves some very powerful processes in the body. Let's talk for a moment about the science behind social bonding. A 2014 study published in Frontiers in Psychology explored the link between music and social bonding. The researchers found that there are two key concepts at work. The first is a phenomenon called synchronization. This happens when you perform similar movements at the same time with others, like dancing or walking. Researchers found that when it occurs, it positively influences how people interact and feel about others engaging in the same actions. The second concept at work here is that when people synchronize, their bodies release feel-good hormones like oxytocin and endorphins. Oxytocin is also known as the bonding chemical. You may have heard how this chemical skyrockets right after a mother gives birth, or when she breastfeeds her baby, or when they cuddle, or when people elevated levels are linked to increased trust, eye contact, facial recognition, generosity, empathy, and perceptiveness. Plus, both listening to and making music have been linked to the release of this hormone as well. Then you have endorphins, which serve as the body's natural pain relief system. These are released during physical activity, which is why people who run often refer to this effect as runner's high. It elevates the body's perception of pleasure. Social bonding activities like dancing, singing, or drumming, or even laughing, have all been shown to trigger the release of endorphins. Interestingly, the authors note that people have a tendency to spontaneously and unintentionally synchronize movements with one another. As the synchronization occurs, levels of trust between people, even complete strangers, rise. And the more synchronized the activity is, the more bonding is likely to occur. So the massive crowd bouncing in unison at our show with the Grateful Dead all those years ago actually makes perfect sense. And it also helps to explain the tight-knit deadhead community that travels all over the country to see the band play. Of course, following your favorite band around the country probably doesn't jive with your schedule, but you can still use the underlying concepts to reap the benefits of social bonding. Here are a few ideas. First, just get together with friends or family to attend a concert, and don't hesitate to move and sway to the music together. Second, seek out a local drum circle. Most are beginner-friendly, and some even provide drums to borrow. Facebook and meetup.com are great places to start. Simply search the keywords drum circle or group drumming or even drum workshop. And third, consider joining a local singing group or even a choir. And remember, you don't need to be good at any of the activities to get the health benefits. 
just being a part of the process brings about your body's positive chemical changes. Well, that's it for today. I appreciate you tuning in. Remember to come see us on our social media channels on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Just search Jim Donovan Sound Health. Now, before you go, I'd like to let you know about a free resource I made for you. It's called the Sound Health Newsletter. In it, I share the latest research in music and health in an easy-to-understand form. I also share beginner-friendly music and wellness exercises that you can use every day to feel your best. When you sign up, you also get discounts and first access to all of my sound health products and events. Remember, it's completely free. If you'd like it, just visit DonovanHealth.com and enter your name and email address, and I'll start sending you new issues right away. While you're on the website, you can also read full transcripts of this show and check out a ton of other valuable resources. If you have any feedback, send me an email to feedback at donovanhealth.com. All the information presented on this show is for educational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. Lastly, come and visit me on our Sound Health Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube channels. I'd love to see you there. The Sound Health Podcast is produced by OmniVista Health Learning and Donovan Health Solutions. For Sound Health, this is Jim Donovan. See you next time.